Hello everybody, this is David from Greyline Isle of Rome. Today we are we have a very special live. We are live from Piazza Navona and you will say again Piazza Navona. No, okay, I understand. We've been here before, we've been here different times, but today we are going to see something special because as maybe uh, you know, the square was created at the top of an ancient Roman stadium. Uh, look the shape of the square this big oval basically the square where we are walking now before was the uh, was the arena the, the stage where the games used to be held and during the excavations during the 30s of the 20th century below the buildings that you can see today has been found something the ruins about the ancient Rome let's go together because today we got a very special permission to visit the archaeological area beneath these, uh, uh, these buildings it's something that you also can do uh, in which way you can just buy a ticket uh, now I will show you where is the ticket entrance so let's do it together from the square you take this road and then you turn to the left let's do it together let's go there Oh, in the meantime, uh, this is a live that is completely free. It's something that Grey Line Isle of Rome is offering you. So please, we need your support. Just uh, uh, share this video on your profile. Okay, here we are. I got some problem with the, uh, with, the, with the connection. Now I'm back. I'm here and I'm showing you the first arch of this uh, ancient stadium. You can see up here there is the palace and down here there is the arch and now we are going down below let's go there together you turn around the square till you find the entrance over there there is the river uh, over there there is a bridge and there is the river Tiber uh, crossing the bridge you will find the big palace uh, that is like the courthouse of Rome and also you can walk in the direction of the Vatican it's just 10 minutes walking ciao Brigida ciao everybody hello you know uh, we say ciao in Italian this is David welcome everybody so now let me wear my mask because we are getting in okay let's go together I'm show you from the outside Stadio di Domiziano the stadium of Domitian that is the emperor that created this place you get in there is a ticket office uh, office and a bookshop that is uh, actually uh, very good you can find a lot of beautiful books you can just buy the ticket here that the maximum price is 8 euro and 50 cents and with the ticket you will receive this audio guide that is where it works like an interactive pen and a map i will show you a map with some numbers on it you have just to put let me do it because it's difficult with the phone in my hand but i will try to show you you have just to touch with the pen the number and you will listen uh, the explanation that is very well done but now let's go to the underground uh, of course Zena is asking do you need a vaccine certificate as all the archaeological areas in the city all the museums of course you need to show uh, your vaccination um, uh, certificate of course I did not because here <laughs> I, I, I talk with them before and they and they show you before but uh, of course you must do it. Uh, so look at this, this is very, um, uh, very clear because this is the square today you can see the three fountains in the center the fountains of the four rivers created by Bernini the fountain of the Triton the fountain of the of the moor and here the big ch the beautiful church of Saint Agnes in Agone look the shape of the square of the building and look the shape of the ancient stadium created by the Emperor Domitian in and inaugurated in the 86 AD. So this is very good and also here you have this panel showing the stratification of the time from the stadium the ruins, the first building during the Middle Ages, the, um, and then the Renaissance and the Baroque time till nowadays. But let's go downstairs together. 
just one second. Let me turn on the Wi-Fi because here they have a, a Wi-Fi that is working perfectly. So you wait. Okay, here we are. You get down and you start your route. You can see the beautiful ruins. Uh, you can see that when they made the excavation to create the building, they also fixed this area and they created this ceiling. So we have the natural light. So if you are around Rome, if you're visiting Piazza Navona and you want to do something else, you can come here also on a rainy day is perfect. Oh, when upstairs, when in the city of Rome is too hot, this is the perfect place because it's underground and it's quite free. Uh, I forgot to show you something. A first map that is a reconstruction of ancient Rome. Uh, basically, in this moment, uh, we are here. This was the Domitian Stadium. Next to it, a building called the Odeon that was used for the competition, uh, uh, musical competition. And next to it, there was a, a bath, a Roman bath. Uh, the connection between the Roman bath and the stadium is not not casual, no, because it was used by the athletes that used to have the games in this place. Oh, uh, guys, if you have any question, I'm here for you. Just write down and I will read it. So let's go down to the route. You can see much better here of an ancient map of the city of Rome that the area where, where we are now is called the Campus Martius, the field of Mars, the god of the war. And this is Piazza Navona and the stage of today that was the Odeon and this the Baths. But there were so many structures. You can see that it's very close to the river. Let's go down and let's find out the history of this place uh, because uh, you can see these panels that are very helpful they are very well done and well written here is a reconstruction of the ancient stadium that can host 30,000 people it was not that super big because uh, if you think the Colosseum can host from uh, um, uh, from 50,000 to 73,000 spectators but uh, these 30,000 uh, um, spectators and uh, the name the name uh, um, stadium is coming from the Greek word I will show you here on this panel uh, stadion you can read it over there that was actually a way to uh, me measure a distance 180 meters uh, and uh, along the, um, the one uh, they had the most important Greeks competition the race from this word is coming the name stadium that we use uh, today you can see how the Greek influence is important uh, Zena is asking what is considered the city center back then was not the proper city center because it was a place uh, that was not used for the people to live uh, but was for uh, like the military uh, exercise for this reason Campo Mars the field dedicated to Mars the uh, the the god the of the of the war and used for the games but uh, you can see the the history of this uh, uh, of this stadium is connected with the emperor Domitian Domitian is a member of the Flavian dynasty the Flavians the Flavians are the ones that created also the Colosseum Vespasian was the father Titus and Domitian the two sons so he is the last member of this uh, um, of the of this dynasty well um, the emperor Domitian used to have a passion for the Olympic Games, for the Greek Games. He was really fas fascinated by the Greek culture, so he created a stadium that was not used for the gladiator games like the Colosseum, but was used for the agonistic games. So also the name of this place. For centuries has been told that the name um, that, uh, that the, uh, the name of the square, Navona, was coming from the Naumachia, the naval battles ships. But we know that there are no records of ship battles held in the uh, stadium of Domitian. We think that the truth about the name uh, Navona is due to the agonistic game, the Agones, uh, then later was called the Campus in Agon, in Agonis, uh, Nagona, Nagonis, Nagona, Nabona. Now is uh, the way the word changed during the time. 
let me show you the ruins of what is left because here you can see uh, what is left about the original steps leading to the seat to the top floor that arch up there then was leading uh, to the one of the entrances and the entrances to the different seats were called vomitoria in latin vomit no like uh, to vomit that means to expel was like a mouth that was expelling people in the um, uh, in the in the seats you can see the materials used for this uh, uh, for this monument the travertine that is the typical limestone of rome and the bricks uh, you can see much better here look at the top uh, and um, i think here there is a panel that is very curious and i want to show you you know the roman empire has been uh, uh, super important and look this uh, this panel that is very interesting uh, he says that during the entire history of the roman western empire we had 105 emperors and only 34 of them died of natural causes and 72 died suffering a violent death that is uh, not that can make you think a lot the average lifespan of the empire was five years so these uh, uh, make us know how uh, how many people wanted that throne so here we have something interesting two panels showing the good ones and the bad ones so what i mean this is the magnificent seven the most beloved emperor in history Vespasian, Antonino Pio, uh, Trajan, Marcus Aurelius, Adrian and Constantine and then here the most hated emperors the ones that uh, um, suffered of damnatio memoria damnatio memoria is a uh, two latin words that means the damnation of the memory after their death their face was uh, erased by uh, by uh, the different monuments. Uh, their uh, name was uh, erased by everywhere because they were considered bad ones. And also our guy Domitian is included among them. Uh, so just to give you an idea of the dimension of the Roman Empire, look at this. This is very interesting. Look how huge. No, we had part of Europe included also England. They had a problem with the Scottish. The Scottish were really tough. They always tried to get there, but the Scottish were always uh, uh, kicking the ass to the Romans so Adrian made a wall like Trump uh, is doing today with uh, uh, tried to do some years ago with uh, with Mexico the same but uh, also Africa the upper part of Africa Egypt the Middle East so you can see how huge it was and if we compare it with the modern empires like the Russian Empire the British Empire the Spanish and the Mongolian you can see that we had some other empires that in term of dimension were bigger but the consequences from the point of view of the culture that had the roman empire were unique they made our civilization the way we are today is due to them and here we have a perfect, beautiful model, a reconstruction of the entire stadium. So you can see the two rings of seats, the little things you can see over there, they are the vomitoria, so the different entrances. And uh, basically, uh, let me show you on the map where we are now. So you can see that this section where we are now was in this part here, uh, the round shape, you know, where the oval is going around. And the arch that I showed you before from upstairs was the main one, so an honorific uh, entrance over here. So, but later we will see it better. So remember, uh, no chariot races were held here for that there was the Circus Maximus. So even if we know that some Sometimes they did it, but here they made the agonistic games like the fights, like uh, the jump. So let's talk about the games. Actually, this panel um, can show you much better what is the section that we are looking at today. So the red one compared to the entire thing. So uh, about the games held here, they have different kinds of them. Uh, basically, this place was created for a particular uh, game that was called. Uh, um, 
Capit Capitolia that was dedicated, a game dedicated to uh, Jupiter, Jupiter Capitolinus, uh, no, Jupiter the king of the gods. There was an important temple at the top of the Capitoline Hill and these games were held every four years, basically like the, um, uh, like the Olympic Games. So some games that they held here, the Pancration. No, this is very famous. So you can see this beautiful stadium, and uh, it can be compared like to the modern uh, Muay Thai, just to give you an idea. And uh, the uh, the word Pancration is uh, formed by the two Greek words Pan, that means all, Kration, no, that means uh, uh, power, creation, and all. No, you can see it uh, here. Means uh, all the power, so all the strength. And this was the uh, strongest, the competition. Uh, the scope of uh, the purpose was to immobilize the, uh, the, the opponent until he surrendered. So let me ask you, I have a question, David, one question. Is it believed that there could be more of the stadium underneath the modern building? Of course, uh, when you see Piazza Navona and basically you can see all the modern buildings, the churches and all the palaces, also Palazzo Panfili, the palace of an important family below these buildings there are the ruins of the ancient Rome. Remember Rome is a lasagna, the different layers of the time. So here has been excavated, let me show you once again, here has been excavated and uh, they fix everything to show you, but below the other uh, the other buildings is still, um, there are still the ruins of the of the stadium of the mission. Another a game that was part uh, of the uh, pentathlon. Pentathlon, no five uh, different competition together was the uh, javelin throw. You can see it here, and uh, this was very popular in ancient Rome. Another game that was not very popular in Rome, but in Greece, yes, was the discus throw. You can see this very famous uh, statue, the Discobolus, and that was one of the games. Uh, how many layers are there to Rome? Okay, Deborah, uh, in, um, uh, in Rome there are different layers, it depends from the area of the city, but more or less you have to consider it at least uh, three, four layers. So the layer of the ancient Rome, then the layer of the Middle Age, and then the layer of nowadays. But there are some areas where there is, if we go deeper, we found even older things. It depends from the area, from the, uh, from the history. This was the fight that was like the wrestling of nowadays. So basically, when you see the Olympics, you know, uh, just uh, one month ago, we had the Olympic Games in, in Tokyo. Well, the place where these games uh, um, were born were in Greece, but then in Rome, here, this was the place, in fact. So here you can see the beautiful stadium of the, uh, the, the, the beautiful statues of the past showing the different sports. This was the boxing. I like the like the boxing of nowadays, you can see here that they were using some gloves made of leather uh, with some stripes, uh, no? And this is a very famous statue that, uh, in bronze that is preserved in Rome and you can see still today in Palazzo Massimo. And then there was the long jump, I will show you on the other side that uh, um, there was a difference with the long jump that we have uh, today because uh, look at that they were holding in their hands some weights to make the, uh, the jump even longer, to, um, it was used in a particular way that is completely different from nowadays. And then we had the run. You can see it here, the, the foot race that was, uh, was normal and was part of the pentathlon, you know, the five different uh, things. Now, oh, I forgot something, let me show you. Oh yes, they were making the games completely naked. We have some mosaics, some things showing that they, were, they have to fight completely, completely naked. And also when they used to fight, before the fight, they used to put on their skin some Oil. So they were very shining during the games. Here there is a particular thing. It's called the Serpent's Ultor. Well, uh, I'm asking you, what is this for you today? What it looks like? Try to write it on the comments. Uh, what is this? 
maybe if you're a man you can better understand basically uh, i'm giving an hint so was an urinal of the time was called the serpent's altars and it says that if a man that was uh, peeing over there um, was cheating his wife and was uh, uh, boasting himself about it the a snake from the urinal will eat will take away his penis his jewels let's say this was uh, like uh, the male version of the mouth of truth that is another famous monument in Rome where the female ladies should the, the ladies should put the hands and if they were cheating their husband the um, the hand was cut but uh, you know this is a, a particular one yes Emma you got it very very good let's turn around so I can show you much better the difference uh, in the layers of the uh, of this of the nowadays compared to the past let's turn around we're here so this is the arch that i showed you before you see that compared to the layer of the floor back then there is a difference that is almost of four nine meters in the pants from the areas of of the city like in this case is four meters you can see these panels no you can see zero is the level of the floor today today uh, up there you can see the san pietrini the cable stones at the top and this is where we are now four meters below you can see the stratification of the time how this happened remember that the um uh, remember that the, f the river is just around the corner and now there are some walls containing the river before the river was floating all the time and uh, so was leaving some sand some soil also here you can see much better this that was one of the arches of the entrance of the uh, of the stadium that was leading directly to the entrance Massimo uh, Oops, what happened? Uh, about what? Uh, sorry, I miss it. Just ask me <laughs> what you want to know. And uh, you can see much better from this side. And uh, this is interesting um, because these were some like uh, squared bricks that were used during the construction of the different buildings because they used the uh, normal bricks, but also sometimes there were different layers of these squared that, uh, bricks that were called uh, uh, Bipedi, uh, because it means literally the two feet, because was me the measure was uh, two Roman uh, feet, and were introduced in the structures made of bricks, uh, uh, like as a way um, the anti-seismic, no, against the earthquake uh, to maintain the elasticity and the power of the building. And uh, this is very interesting because on them you can see uh, these uh, signs. Well, this was like the uh, the brand, the the place where they were done and the name of the company that made it uh, very modern let's say oh you lost me for two minutes <gasps> oh my god I hope now it's fine sorry I guess uh, can you hear me now just write down if you can hear me can you hear me guys just write down it's okay there is connection I'm alone I'm no oh, 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 okay okay I'm here perfect <laughs> so let's go through the arches from what is left because of digging all around this area also some statues were found the statues that were making the decoration of the facade of the monument because uh, you saw outside was made of arches and in the arches in the upper floor you see that we had some beautiful statues like look the shape of the beautiful body of this Apollo so how do we know that this was Apollo the god of the of the poetry because uh, look at this we found the some statues that were com that are completed and you can see looking at this you can understand that this was a similar statue with this made in the same way uh, so this uh, square during the time uh, the stadium then was abandoned and uh, during the time with the certification they started creating buildings until became one of the most beautiful squares in the world the piazza navona as we know it to get today and uh, at the end of the 17th century a tradition started after the construction of the fountain of the four rivers by bernini they used to flood 
the uh, the square as you can see in this beautiful uh, um, oil paint painting and they used to make like some uh, chariot races but made by the most noble families of the um, of the of the city of Rome was a, a way to show their power, their prestige, and uh, this is uh, something that was handed until uh, more or less around the 1856, if I'm not wrong, because it was not uh, uh, very uh, very healthy, very uh, for the hygiene of the place. But that was made for a couple of centuries. Let's go this way, and I hope my connection it works. But you know we are underground and here you can see a piece of the original big pillar made of a travertine limestone and you can see how the external decoration of the pillar was they had like a semicolon all around uh, here also there is uh, there are some chairs they are transparent you can see it very well but now I'm sitting because there are some video some videos showing the recording constructed Rome. You can see the ruins and how they were before. It's incredible because you can really understand how magnificent was the ancient Rome. Remember that Rome in the first, in the second century AD uh, reached one million people. This was the place to be. This was the place where everybody wants to come. It was the richest, the healthiest uh, city on earth. And uh, it was the most monumental place in the world. So, uh, say, I say, instead of the air conditioning, yes, of course, here in the underground, we are really fresh. We stay really fresh. Here they placed also some panels to show you uh, the other places that were used for games like the circus like the circus maximus that was used very famous for the chariot races you can see here you can see the reconstruction of the circus maximus that was connecting directly with the imperial palace well the circus maximus was way bigger than this because can host uh, up to 200,000 people and of course the colosseum that was used for the gladiator games let's go back over there Okay, so now, uh, guys, uh, uh, there is also more to see because uh, uh, I'm reconnecting myself to the question that you asked before about if uh, below the other buildings in the square there are pieces uh, of the stadium. Well, um, with uh, a particular ticket that you can buy here, they are making also a tour below one of these buildings you have to go basically in the undergrounds of the of the palace where the people are living and you can see another area of this i can't go there with my phone i can't show you because over there there is no connection it's really underground you see here they fix it and this here it's quite open so we have the internet connection but over there there is nothing so i can't show you so now guys i uh, i hope uh, you had a great time with me and I show you something that you need you didn't know so I invite you when you are here in Rome to come and visit this place because it, it's really outstanding and the way uh, you uh, you can say well uh, they are just the uh, arches of the ancient no, Rome no the way they are uh, telling you the history of this place these panels uh, this is really interesting so I think you have to come here remember the stadium of the mission in Piazza Navona so I'll meet you uh, next week for a new live stream from somewhere else. Surprise, we will uh, decide where to go. Actually, if you want to, uh, me to show you a particular place of the city, just write it down in the comments. So we will go there together. So, uh, I, wait a second, I have two comments. Oh. Oh, Deborah, I'm so sorry this was closed during your, during your visit. Uh, so next time we are waiting for you. So uh, write us. So we'll take you everywhere. Uh, and uh, Massimo is saying that, you, oh, your name is connecting with, uh, uh, with, the, um, with the stadium. So uh, it can be. It can be. So uh, and uh, we are waiting for you. So you know what you have to do. Like the video, share it on your profile and see you soon. Bye.